we'll start with the prayers <clears throat> om sahana bhavato sahana bhunato sahaviryam karavavahai tejasvi navadi tamastoma vidvishavahai om shanti 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 We are starting today the first session of question and answer. This is a completely new experiment which I'm trying. And uh, mainly with a focus to people who are doing study, self-study offline. There are many students who have written to us and they say they are doing some this uh, prescribed syllabus offline. So to facilitate them was this Q&A session. But then there were also some of the uh, other participants who said, yes, we would also like to join from our regular classes. Also people said they would like to join. So the format of this Q&A session is, uh, questions have to be sent to us by WhatsApp before the session. Uh, and then I will send out the replies during the Saturday when I have the session or Friday. Uh, and then you can ponder over the answers and then come back when we discuss that on Saturday. After every question, I will, uh, Shanmugam will unmute the person who has asked the question. So if there's any response, you can respond after the answer. I will begin with the first question. Uh, this was raised by Surya Pradhan. How to manage spirituality and career? See, when we enter spiritual study, uh, we enter it in a very slow fashion. We don't jump into it and uh, stop our career and then go full scale into it. Generally, what we recommend is a very slow pace at which you start and then grow gradually during your life. That is why I always say that you start with Tattva Bodha first, because that gives you a complete idea about what the whole study is about. Because many people, they just come straight into Bhagavad Gita, uh, one chapter, 14, 15, 13, and then they just listen to it, and then they feel that by studying the Bhagavad Gita, one chapter, I can get the full spiritual uh, knowledge. Many people have this misconception. Now, and then they feel after listening to Bhagavad Gita, maybe two, three chapters, uh, once in three months, six months, they feel that uh, they are not going anywhere and then they stop. The first thing we should understand is spiritual study, spiritual spirituality is like any other science. I think this is a science. We need to, it, the only difference is it is a science where we focus not on the objective world, but on the subject. And this takes time because you are asking the question, who am I? And trying to get an answer. Many of us are working people. Therefore, what is recommended is come and attend classes once a week or twice a week and take up a self-study of one text at a time. But start with Tathva Bodha and Atma Bodha. After you have done Tathva Bodha and Atma Bodha, you can come on Saturday sessions and join the group and start picking up wherever uh, you can. Do the text, for example, right now we are doing the Upanishads, you can start, no problem. And then whenever you have free time, you can do the other uh, text which we have been re recommending which is also there in this uh, handout, which I've sent to you. In the end, you will find all the texts. So 
doing duty and uh, focusing on the career is important at the early stages of our life. You cannot, uh, you see, uh, it, uh, if your age is 65, then I would say, okay, you can spend more time. But many people come to us and say we are at the age of 20, 24. Some people have come at the age of 12, 17, 18, all that. So my uh, answer to them is first study, uh, get a work, get, get a job, uh, do your normal duties first, and then pick up this as a uh, as a uh, as a extracurricular activities in the beginning. You would start with the uh, like I said, the prescribed prescription prescribed course is already there. You can start in whatever way you can. One two hours a week is also good enough. And take a balanced view of life. See, we have to live our life. We have to face the struggles of our life. At the same time, we have to engage in this spiritual study. This is very, very important to note. You cannot run away from life. You have to do the duty for the family, for uh, most of us are all householders. And we need to spend time in the household activities, uh, doing the rituals which are uh, which I will be talking in one of the questions I'll be talking today. This is called as a religious lifestyle. So Surya Pradhan, I hope I have answered your question. Do you have any response to this? I don't know whether he's here. He's here. If he's not here, I will move on to the next question. Okay. The next question is by Dolat Tribe. Uh, the question which was asked is need help on mastering Nididhyasanam. How to locate the witness and get established and remain in witness mode? See, Nidityasnam uh, is a process which is to be done after Shravanam and Mananam. So, Nidityasnam means dwelling on the scriptures for a short period by closing your eyes. That is what is called as Nidityasnam. Suppose I have come to realize that I am not the body. Then, sitting down in meditation, practicing for 10 minutes a day, to start with about one month, I'm sure you might have done this, but uh, I'm just giving you some of the basics in case you have not done it. And deliberately in meditation, we have to say, I am just the witness of my thoughts, I am the Sakshi principle, and I am not the thoughts. See, many times in the meditation, we get absorbed in our thoughts. This is why Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, again and again, come back to your focus. Come back to your, uh, your uh, center of attention, which is what is called as Sakshi Bhava. And you have to stay it. You see, deliberately, you have to bring the vritti in and say, I am the witness consciousness. I am not the thought. Thoughts are coming and going. Again, you stop in meditation. Let the thoughts rise. If thoughts rise, it's okay. Thoughts, uh, don't get, don't engage with the thoughts. Develop a distance between you, the sakshi, and the instrument which is producing the thoughts. See, we must realize that we all have a mind. This body comes with a mind. It is an instrument, like you have a hand, like you have uh, legs. To do certain things, to grasp certain things, you have hands. To speak, you have the mouth. So similarly, 
to produce thoughts, you have the brain. Now, this is the thoughts come without you asking for it. Continuous production of thoughts will take place throughout your life. Like your heart is beating without you asking is an involuntary action. Similarly, thoughts are produced in our brain involuntarily and that is what is called as vasanas. Okay? But in the same body-mind complex, there is another element which is called as sakshi, which is the self, which is the pure self. So you have to say in the meditation, I am the sakshi. Again and again, you have to say, I am the sakshi. Remind yourself. When you do this type of meditation for 10 minutes, don't elongate this for one hour and two hours. Don't do it. It's not required. This is only for you to practice that I am the Sakshi Bhava, I am not the Jiva Bhava. Sakshi is different than Jiva. So deliberate practice of this type of meditation will improve your Nidityasana. How to locate this witness? Witness is to be claimed. You cannot objectify the witness. Many, many times the students in meditation, even after 10-15 years of meditation, they miss this point. It's not that a light will come in uh, like a flash in your mind and say, I am, I am that particular consciousness and so on. It will not come. It may be, even if it comes, it is just an object. Ignore it. What you have to do is bring a thought, Aham Brahma Asmi, Aham Sakshi Asmi. I am the witness. The thought should arise. That thought, when it arises, it is called as Brahma Kara Vritti. So, Practicing this Brahma Karavritti is getting established in that witness world. It is, after some time, you can just stop for a few seconds, again, bring back that Brahma Karavritti. Again, start again. See, every time you start engaging into some other thoughts, bring back and say, I am that Sakshi. Okay? Don't get involved with the thoughts. What I will do is, I will proceed with the question and answer because that way we can finish the question and answer. And then later on, if you have any questions regarding the answer I gave you, please write down, put it in the chat box, and you, you will have the time to ask those questions at the end. So I'll have a Q&A session. I will stop after 45 minutes. I will stop. Last 15 minutes, we'll have the replies to and your responses to these questions and answers. Okay, the third question was, uh, how do we practice Panchamaha Yajna? Panchamaha Yajna is nothing but it is the duties which we do as individuals in the society. And what do we do? What do we do as in the by way of Panchamaha Yajna? It is five types of duties. And this is prescribed in the Bhagavad Gita as Deva Yajna, Pitru Yajna, Manushya Yajna, Brahma Yajna, and Bhuta Yajna. Deva Yajna means you you like you go to a temple and and pray to the devatas. Pitrus means you do the shraddhams, which is there during the once a year, which you do for your forefathers. Manushi Yajna is doing social service. You teach yoga, you teach, uh, you teach uh, anything, you know, or you go and help some people. That is what is called as Manushi Yajna. Brahma Yajna means learning the scriptures. Study of the Veda is called as Brahma Yajna. 
And then Bhuta Ignya means, suppose there is a go shala, a cow, uh, a, a place where they bring up the cows. Or you keep your environment clean. You know, your, uh, there are so many activities going on in the world today to keep this and keep the environment happy and healthy. So these are the different types of yajnas, okay, which we can practice in our day-to-day -day life. Need not spend too much time behind it. Don't go overboard and say, I will do service throughout my life. No. You have a duty in all these areas. You divide your time, at least take one or two main, and then the rest of these things can be on the side. That is question number three by Gavin. Then the next question was a very important question. The values in chapter 13 are very important of the Bhagavad Gita. So this question relates to Bhagavad Gita. And he, according to this, uh, uh, what he says is that the values are more important in life than Vedanta. That is correct. You have to practice values first get yourself ready, and then you get into Vedanta. How do we assimilate the values and practice them? This is a very beautiful question, and this has to start right from a very young age. Suppose you have missed your young age, you want to do it now, you can do it. I will tell you in the end how to do it. Without living these values, assimilating Veda will be a dream. I agree with you. Uh, Tathobodha itself says very clearly that you must practice and get your mind ready first. So basically you are absolutely right. You must get and the best, value, the best way to get the mind ready. See, most of the things which we teach in uh, Tathobodha is all to, related to mind. Viveka, Vairagyam, Shamada, Shatka, Sampati, Mumukshut, all are related to the mind. And it is the mind which is giving us the problem. So chapter 12 also deals with, I have put a list of qualities now here in this note so that you can refer it, use it like a reference point. 36 qualities, Advesha, Sarva Bhutanam, Maitrak Karuna Evacha, each of these verses is here and each what each verse has got, the values are all put here, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, up to 19, 36 values are there. Now, as a seeker, first of all, you must find out, go through this list of 36. You put a tick and say, this is what I lack contentment in life. I don't have self-control. Uh, I have absence of joy. You see, uh, I want a desirelessness. I want purity of mind. You put a tick in those areas where you feel you need to focus. First exercise. <coughs> then what you do, Take up one, for example, purity. It's a very, very big, it's a very uh, big area. Purity physically, mentally, and verbally. You can take any others also, you know, indifference to situations in life. You can take up one or two areas initially and tell yourself, this week I'm going to focus on this area and see whether you are able to focus on one value at a time. Don't try to do uh, all the 36 values at one shot. Swami Chinmananda, Chinmananda says in his uh, uh, commentary on this particular verses of 13 to 19, what he says is, you pick up one of these qualities and then uh, without fail, practice that. Without fail. Under all circumstances, practice that one, one value. 
again and again, again and again, don't, you know, like forbearance. Uh, you know, let situations come in life, but I will have the, for, the fortitude, the forbearance to hold on, hold on, hold on. Pick up one, two, three values. Make this as your key. Focus on them and see how you can hold on. Develop these three values first. And then you will realize automatically the rest of the other 33 values or 20, uh, 33 values out of 36 all will start coming to you. So this is the key. The key is, number one, first identify which is important for you. Because out of 36, or some may be important for person A, some may be for person B, some for person C. Identify what is most important for you. I have also given the other uh, 30, chapter 13, there are 20 qualities here. For a seeker like humility, amanitvam, adambitvam, ahimsa, all these qualities. If you want details of what these are, you can go to the website and go through the notes of, uh, of these verses. I have got detailed explanation of all these values. And uh, you can study it and then pick up, like I said, two or three. And uh, focus on them. And again and again, repeat in your own mind, I am working on this, I am working on this. It should be, it should become uh, subconsciously, you must be aware. Anytime you are violating that, you must become aware. So this way, you will realize that I am able to achieve. It is a very tough thing. I am telling you that controlling the mind is extremely tough because of our vasanas. In chapter 14 also, so chapter 12 has got values, chapter 13 has got values, chapter 14 also has values of a guna, gunatita uh, seeker, a person who has crossed the gunas. There are three gunas, sattva, rajas and tamas. How to cross those three gunas and remain steady? And there also you find some of the values given from verses 21 to 25. Sita Praknya Lakshana of the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita also teaches us how to have mind control with reference to desires. Very beautiful section in chapter, chapter 2 that it gives you step by step. Don't get into delusion. Don't first of all start thinking. You go through my chapter 2 notes on this, uh, the, these verses. Uh, uh, you know, which are there in chapter 2. So there also you will find very, very beautiful. Uh, the verses are basically Jhayato Vishayan Pumsaha. That, that's the uh, verses which start from that particular, uh, from this particular verse. Um, so uh, that is verse number 62. 62 onwards, chapter 2, up to uh, 64, 62, 63, 64. These are three verses which are very important. It will teach you how I can get rid of uh, certain wrong values in life. Very, this section, you go through it. If you have any questions, you can write to me. I can explain to you uh, personally. Bhagavad Gita, uh, nature of, okay, another way to practice, okay, see, uh, value development is one, one area. Simultaneously, if you're able to follow, I am not the body-mind complex, but I am the pure consciousness, which is of the nature of these points which are mentioned from verse 13 to 18. This is in contrary. You see, if you are able to do that values, once you have done that, what will help you to hold on to those values is this meditation or this teaching, which will learning, which will help you about Atma. The more you learn about your pure nature, you will find that I'm able to live those values easily. 
and that is why i have given you this list of 13 verses 13 to 18 which is the focus of nyayam you see jnanam nyayam in the 13th chapter of bhagavad gita Lord Krishna talks about what is that object which I should know in life. Knowing which, I can cross samsara. Knowing which, I will know everything about this world. Knowing which, I will be not reborn in this world. And that is given in these verses and that 13 to 18, I have just put, put it in point form here. There are 23 arrow marks which are uh, given and uh, this will this will enhance your uh, your uh, goal of holding on to values so like i said take two three values first develop them first the rest will follow automatically the next question is from vibhuti narayan Constantly practicing to increase sattva guna component, that is, he wants to practice sattva guna, and then he wants to become a gunatita. Gunatita means what? See, first of all, you should understand guna means what? Guna means prakriti. This is described in chapter 14 of Bhagavad Gita. Prakriti means what? This body is made up of matter. The matter principle is born the cause of matter, the cause of the Pancha Mahabhutas, the five elements, earth, water, fire, space, air. These are the five elements on which the body is surviving. The cause of this, according to Bhagavad Gita, is Prakriti, which is made up of three gunas. This is how creation has been explained in Bhagavad Gita. Now, I am not the body is what Lord Krishna is teaching to Arjuna all the time. But the problem is I have to live with this body throughout my life. Because body is born, I am attached to this body today. And I cannot drop it all of a sudden because this is a cycle of life. It has come because of some prar of the karma according to law of karma. Now, the only way I can say I am not a jiva, but I am that consciousness, paramatma principle in this body is by crossing over the three gunas. So three gunas is basically prakriti, which is which is a cause of the five elements, and the five elements are the cause of the body, including the subtle mind. Mind is also made up of panchabhutas. How to cross this? Is there any way I can cross it? Lord Krishna beautifully describes this in chapter 14. In the gunatita portion, he has described how to cross this uh, impact of the three gunas. And one of the things, uh, now here in the answer, what I've said is how to cross, first of all, have a religious lifestyle. Religious lifestyle means uh, doing your duty, doing some puja, some chanting, some, some study, self-study and all that. So that's number one. Shravanam Mananam Nididhyasnam, as soon as you have got a basic control over your mind and you have some time available. These two things are important. A person who is extremely rajasic will not be able to come to listen to the scriptures. He will not come. Thousands of people are there who will say, no, 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 Bhagavad Gita is not for me. And then Upanishad, no, not at all. They have not even heard of Brahma Sutra. So, you need a little bit of control over your mind even to come to Shravana. Even to say, have the desire to do self-study is a, is a result of a lot of Punya. Because coming into this field of spirituality is not easy. 
So the second aspect of how to cross over these gunas is get involved in Shravanam Mananam Nididhyasnam. And the third suggestion is do Vedantic meditation. Vedantic meditation means, which I have just now said, Sakshi meditation. I have got a lot of videos in the uh, in the website or you know in the study uh, group of videos which I have forwarded to you. You you have plenty of videos. Take those ideas, practice it yourself, and keep the study going. You see, the keeping the study going of the uh, Veda will help you to quieten your mind. The moment the mind quietens, you are already on the path of controlling the three gunas. Invariably, you will find, I am now better off. Earlier, I used to be very agitated. Many people who have gone through these meditation sessions have got tremendous benefits out of these over the mind. Controlling the mind, how to do it is a big science. And our scriptures are, are, uh, are absolutely uh, the best in this area. Vibhuti asked another question about Panchi Karnam. Panchi Karnam, for those who, are, who have done the Tattva Bodha, this is a model. Panchi Karnam is a model. Now, what does it explain? I will explain to you the model, uh, but before that, I want to ex uh, explain to you why we do Panchi Karnam. And uh, this is a long note I have prepared, uh, uh, but still I will run through it a little bit so that you have the background. You see, the first thing you should when you study the pancha, uh, when you study uh, Tattva Bodha, these are all abstracts of the Tattva Bodha notes. First of all, what Veda teaches us is body is made up of five elements. Now, how do I go deeper into the study of this uh, uh, body itself? For that, the Veda prescribes this model of pancha Bhutas. I mean, th these are not. Uh, accepted by science as such, but this is Vedic model. Now, what does the Veda say? Because Veda says that before the creation of the gross five elements, which my sense organs can perceive, they were existing in subtle form. There was a subtle Akasha, subtle Vayu, subtle Agni, subtle Apaha, subtle Prithvi. And the subtle elements have got these gunas, these properties. Akasha has got only one guna. See how beautifully the uh, structure of the five elements is described in the Veda. Vayu is born out of Akasha. There is no proof to say that, uh, you know, can you show me proof? Shastra is the proof. Chandogya Upanishads clearly says all this. Akasha, from Akasha, Vayu is born. Taitri Upanishad, if you study Brahmanandavali, the second chapter, clearly talks about how these five elements are born from that pure consciousness. Ultimately, everything goes back to that consciousness. Vayu has got two properties, Parsha and Shabda. Agni has got three properties, Apaha, four, and Prithvi is the grossest. Okay? This is the first thing you should understand. And then, each of this property is recognized by a sense organ. Each of the sense organ recognizes one one. For example, for sound, you have ears. For uh, uh, for touch, we have the skin. For, for form and color, we have the eyes. For the taste, we have the tongue. And for the smell, we have the nose. Each element is correspondingly attached to 
one one sense organ. From that element, this particular sense organ is born. That element has got the faculty of hearing, feeling, seeing, tasting, smelling. Each of these faculties are given. If it is organs of action like tongue, hands, legs, genitals, anus, the certain powers are given. And then these powers in this body is controlled by a devata. What is the definite, what is the meaning of a devata? You see, we go and pray to the devatas in the temples. And we say, for example, here, they talk about big devata for space. If you have problem with your ears, you, you would pray to the big devata. Bayu devata for anything to do with the skin. Surya devata for the eyes. Varuna devata for the tongue. Ashwini kumaras for the smell. Indra Devata for the hands, Vishnu for the legs, Prajapati for the genitals, and Yama, Lord of Death. So these are, there are powers in the world which are controlling these powers in the body. And that is one aspect. This is what is called as Adi Deva. Adhyatma, Adi Deva, Adi Bhuta. Adi Bhuta relates to the five elements. Adi Deva relates to the, uh, the forces which control in this body. Then we should understand that three gunas are controlling the five elements. How? The Sattvic guna is responsible for the subtle uh, uh, powers in this body. For example, the jnana indriyas. Jnana indriyas, these are all before the gross body is produced. Indriyams, they exist without the body also. That is why Lord Krishna says that at the time of death, you take away all these indriyams and then plant it in the next sthula sharira. Sattva is responsible for jnana indriyas. Rajoguna is responsible for the action. All the karma indriyas. This is the sattvic and rajasic aspect. What is the tamasic aspect? Tamasic aspect is the gross five elements which you see from where the body is made. The gross body is made. Okay, how does the subtle element become gross? That is explained in a process called as Panchi Karna. Okay, this is where the context of Panchi Karnam comes. How does this process happen from subtle to gross? Subtle air, how does it become gross air? That is what is explained in this chart. What happens according to Vedic atomic physics is space divides itself into two halves. First, that is what is shown in number two. You have saw, you, you got a circle, it first gets divided into two. Okay? The tendency to divide happens first. Each of these elements, all these five elements, they have a tendency to divide. Before the division word, it is called as Tanmatra. And after it starts developing, that means this is where the... Uh, this happens naturally, but this is only a process which is explained in the Upanishads. In one of the Upanishads, this is mentioned. One of the minor Upanishads. Now, the third step is the split takes place. When the split takes place, 50% half the air retains or 50% of that particular element is retained as one set. The balance 50%, it borrows from the other four elements. 
That means one eighth of space will borrow one eighth of air, one eighth of fire, one eighth of water, one eighth of earth. One by eight into four is what? Half again. So half plus half space plus half combination of the four elements becomes the ultimate gross element, gross space. I hope it is clear. Each element goes through this process and becomes gross. Once it becomes gross, gross earth, which we can, where the eyes can see, that comes. And once this is, uh, once this is born, then that will give the entire, that produces the entire matter principle. The whole world of matter comes into play. That is what is the tamasic aspect. Okay, so this is how Panchi Karanam is explained in the Veda. And the process is, grossification happens from subtle elements and then the whole process is of creation of the whole universe takes place. Okay, then Bharat has got uh, a few, uh, three or four questions. I will try to answer some of them. And uh, here, uh, Shanmugam, can you just open up the question properly? Uh, open, uh, other than the Upanishads, what other reasoning can be used against Sankhya notion of many Purushas? Uh, there are three methods. Basically, uh, uh, you're talking about the reasons to prove uh, the Sankhya notion uh, the, basically, the, 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 there are only three methods which we can use. Uh, one is Shruti, Yukti, and Anubhava. Uh, maybe in your uh, question answers, you can elaborate a little bit more. If at all, I'm not able to pick up exactly what you need. Uh, Shruti is, uh, is basically the... is the uh, study of higher texts. I've given a list of higher texts here. Yukti is only to be used what Shastra gives us. That means the logic which is prescribed uh, by the Shastra will uh, help you to understand and reason out uh, the Sankhya method of creation or of the whole universe. Uh, let me see whether he is here. Is Bharat there in the, uh, yeah, Bharat is here, okay. Uh, Anubhava is, uh, is the third method uh, to reason out the Sankhyas. See, the way I've understood your question is how to, uh, how to use the Upanishad to find uh, that Sankhya is not right, the best method is to go to Brahma Sutra because that is the ultimate because if you have not uh, done the study of Brahma Sutra, Brahma Sutra, the second chapter, is full of this uh, study of all the philosophers and how they, how Shankaracharya uh, fights and uh, convinces about Advaita. Third is Anubhava. Anubhava means your ultimate realization is the ultimate is the uh, method to say that there is only one Atma and not many Atmas which the Sankhyas they believe. Uh, the next question. The next question, one second. Uh, my understanding of Niruguna Brahman is that it's prior to manifest and unmanifest. Hence, it is not a state of being aware of being awareness, as that is the mind. 
consciousness needs to be aware of itself as its pure subject. Okay, consciousness, see, this is again where you have to uh, be slightly be careful. Don't make consciousness as an object. The only way we can do is I can only claim that I am the consciousness. Okay, that's very, very important. That's why I have suggested uh, uh, the meditation, which and here a very powerful meditation is <clears throat> that I am without sajatiya, vijatiya, swagata, beda, rahitaha. I will explain to you what this meditation process is uh, at a later point of time, but very powerful. Okay, so you are right to say that being aware of being awareness, that is what you have put here, very beautifully put. That is correct. <clears throat> and uh, uh, the next question you have asked, uh, uh, Bharat, is um, what are your opinions on Neo Advaita, Tony Parsons, and Jim Newman? My suggestion here is. <clears throat> Uh, study the Ve uh, Vedanta, that means study one philosophy if possible, okay? Uh, I know you are asking it with reference to what you have already done before, but <clears throat> if you study the Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads, and the Brahma Sutra completely, understand clearly what is Advaita philosophy, Shankaracharya gives you a guarantee. He says you can take any other philosophies after the study of these three, you will find your, you, you will find, uh, you are able to understand others better. And why they are not right and why Advaitam is right. This is what has been said by Shank uh, Shankaracharya and Brahma Sutra and especially in Brahma Sutra. Vedanta reveals the reality to oneself and it has been proved that Veda is the only method, is the only uh, pramanam for the study of the subject, which is the self in us. The consciousness is in us. There is only one pramanam. Like the eyes can see color, for the consciousness there is only one pramanam, which is the Veda pramanam. I have not personally gone through this Tony Parsons and uh, Jim Newman, but my this is the way I would approach your question. Have a full shraddha in the scriptures, study it completely thoroughly, and see whether it gets you are able to convince yourself. And uh, when you study higher texts, uh, you will definitely get convinced. I'm hundred percent sure. People have asked me about non-duality and spiritual path. I try to answer the best uh, through Dhritarishya Viveka and uh, other texts. Is this okay? or do, uh, uh, This is the correct method. What you have done is absolutely right. Veda is the only pramanam. Again and again, I have to stress on that point. Shruti is a pramanam. Mandukya Upanishad, the three avastas are very important. You can study that and explain that to your uh, seekers. Uh, the qualifications, what are, so I, uh, so Bharat, I hope I have answered. Otherwise, I will, uh, you can ask me, call me personally. I will explain to you a little bit more if you have any doubts on that. What is the qualification of reading the Upanishads? Qualification required. This is explained in Tattva Bodha, Viveka, Vairagya. Uh, uh, Shamada Shatka Sampati and Mumukshutva. These are the four qualities which are required before you come to study the Upanishads or the Veda. The Shamada Shatka Sampati means Shama. Shama means control of the control of the mind. Dhamma means control over the organs. Uparama, Titiksha, forbearance. Shraddha means faith. Samadhana means focusing ability, concentration of the mind. Uh, these are all some of the qualities which you need to develop to come to Upanishads. 
discrimination between real and unreal basically it means that whatever you are experiencing in the world according to veda it does not give you full joy there is something which is missing that is what is called as discrimination i am not be i am not able to be happy and fulfilled all my life this is i'm trying to explain to you in simple terms but again you one can go into the depth when you go through those uh, talks in the uh, in my website dispassion vairagyam which you know uh, once you have developed viveka that will help you for, for withdrawing from uh, from doing certain things or reducing your actions it will help you that is what is what vairag desire is something which will come out of viveka out see out of all these four qualities viveka if you can if you are able to do discrimination about what is really real in life what is unreal in life if you start asking your these question yourself you will find a tremendous amount of other other three qualities will come automatically okay the last point i want to touch is uh, one of the seekers asked me this question today the om chart um i don't have so much of time but again quickly i will explain to you om is the ultimate in the world which is called as the the cause of the entire cosmos that is what is called as om now om when you chant it has got two aspects one is the sound and then when you when you finish what happens is the silence the sound aspect represents whatever we are experiencing in the world which is called as vyavahara okay and whatever is the silence is what is called as purusha it is called as the ultimate you call it om you call it brahman you call it uh, turiyam you call it whatever it is that is the nirgunam part that is the silence so om is extremely important in our vedic culture swami chinmayananda has made this chart it explains the whole significance of om with reference to our experiences in life on the top of the chart is vasanas v vasanas have a tremendous control over our life right from the beginning you are born till the death your thoughts are controlling your day to day life you think i want to do this therefore you go behind it and then you spend lot of time so vasana is the unmanifest you can't see the vasanas it is that is what is called as karana shariram it is also called as uh, why the individual is born and it is unmanifest unmanifest means i can't see it it is also called as prakriti it is also called as maya it cannot be seen it is there it is there in the individual it is there in the whole universe also when it is in the whole universe it is called as prakriti when it is there in the individual it is called as avidya so that is the power there is some power because of which this body is born okay then when the body is born we have the sthula sharira there are three things which are there for every transaction one is the actual instrument which is either the body mind or intellect the second is who is the one who is behind the instrument that is what is called as the pramata or the pramata means it is the individual individuality is called as pramata that pramata is perceiving the world he is feeling the world and is thinking about the world the instrument is body mind and intellect bmi the perceiver feeler thinker is the individual and 
they are the individual in this body the perceiver in this body is reacting with the objects outside then only the transaction takes place the objects outside the emotions which are developed these are also objects thoughts which are produced is also an object so what is an interaction what is vyavahara completely if you want to say it is the interaction between the instrument the karta bhokta the individual in the body which is not the real individual because that individual has to realize that he is om that is his what that is the ultimate thing which he has to realize but today he thinks that i am this body that is the perceiver feeler thinker and by the actions of this body what he is getting ultimately is sukham and dukham as per the prarabdha of the body okay this is the om chant with this i will close uh, uh, my presentation with the, all the uh, study of uh, you know which is there in the website which i send you also there are beginners classes 18 of them the uh, uh, 93 videos are there for the beginners then this is there for the advanced students this is the section generally what i would advise is first start at and learn the tattva bodha initially learn the tattva bodha and start attending the saturday classes that is for the beginners classes the wednesday classes is for the advanced people then whenever you can do other texts which are mentioned here you can study one by one you can take up and then you can do at your free time but initially the best thing to do is do tattva bodha and start attending classes because then you will find growth only when you listen listening is more important very very important and attending live classes is definitely more important than you are doing self study but self study also is equal can be done but this is the method to follow a 10 minute uh, uh, meditation for any person who is doing self study will be good if you are chanting the bhagavad gita you want to learn the chanting of the bhagavad gita verses there are these two are provided so this in short is the self study group and uh, today was my first self study group q and a i will now open it up for the group to ask any questions they have i will close the session and then you can ask om purnamada purnamidam purnahat purnamudachade purnasya purnamathaya purnameva vasishyade Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om Yeah Shanmugam can you open up for Q and A Uh, hello, Shukaji. Is Bharat here? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Bharat. Uh, I I just wanted to say thank you. I think I think the answers were were well understood. Um, and and yes, I think this Q and A format is 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 very very good. It's very helpful that you 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 had the answers beforehand, and um, we could go through them. So, ab absolutely. brilliant format thank you thank you thank you bala i will use this format whenever i want to have a q and a session for a larger audience later on yeah and and um i i just like to say that um like i i've i've done a lot of self study this is i think with you yourself this is the first time i've engaged in live classes but um I I I have to admit for me personally the the meditations um I I I think the fact that they are short and guided um is is great for me because I originally found meditations to be 
a little bit intimidating, daunting, complicated. But um, your format is very simplified and it's very, very effective. I'm, I, I think they are brilliant. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bharat. Anybody else has any other question? Sir, I am Vibhuti. Yeah, yeah, tell me. Uh, thank you very much for explaining. Yeah. Yes, sir, just one thing regarding Guna Pita. So, consciously and constantly, we have to increase our sattvic qualities. Uh, that is right. But but have we have we to do anything extra in order to go further? No, no, nothing. You just uh, focus yourself purely on study of the scriptures. That is what will give you more sattva. Okay, sir. Thank you. It will. It see. Sattva means what? Sattva means quietening the mind. Yeah. The mind is rajasic today. So from rajas, you are going to sattva, and sattva will help you to study better and more deeper. See, many a times because in the initial processes, uh, suppose you are in say uh, 10, 15 years ago or 10 years if you study, initially your mind is extremely agitated. Yeah. So the more you study, the more you listen to the scriptures, what happens is your mind from rajas, it becomes sattvic. That is the transformation which happens and that is, that is, that is the main method by which you can make your mind sattvic. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else has any other question? Okay, if there are no other questions, we'll close for the day. And uh, uh, most of you are attending the evening sessions. So I'll see you in the evening. Thank you, and have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you.